Okay, transfer talk time. I know we've been doing a lot of it, but it is getting closer and closer to the transfer window closing, Shaka. So let's talk about Harry Kane. I know we've been doing a lot of that recently, but it rumbles on whether he'll move to City or not. It looks as though City have been happy to raise that bid, but Daniel Levy reported to not be taking the calls anymore. Harry Kane not travelled with the team for their game in Europe this week. But after seeing that opening day, uh, with Man City losing to Spurs, did it just show you that they really do need a number nine up top like Harry Kane? Uh, absolutely, yes. And, and as much as the counter to that is, City looked pretty good last season without a number nine, with Kuno Guerrero only featuring every now and then, with Gabriel Jesus giving the odd run out. Um, but they still, they still won the league, still got to the Champions League final. But I think what you saw in the opening day of the season against Spurs and, and where, where City, I, I just feel, going in a, a, another season without a number nine may cost them is without that number nine, without that pure finisher, you have to be at your absolute best every single game of the season. And you're asking a lot of a midfield, a midfield where Gundogan shone so, so brightly for large spells last season. Kevin De Bruyne, who continues to be, in my opinion, the best player in the league. They cannot have an off day. In winning titles, the old cliche is you have to be able to play ugly and win. Play or play badly and, and still come away with three points. Having a finisher like Harry Kane affords you that. That you can play badly and still win games on a few chances created, a few clear-cut chances created. That's what you saw against, against Spurs. I thought City were by far the better of the two teams in the opening 20 or 25 minutes. Had they had a finisher like Harry Kane, maybe we're having a different discussion about that game altogether. Yeah, and talking about discussions, the discussion is open about Cristiano Ronaldo's future. Now, we probably shouldn't read too much into El Chiringuito, the dramatic Spanish a nightly show talking about him going back to Real Madrid. Carlo Ancelotti has said that chapter is closed. Cristiano Ronaldo has pretty much said so himself. But he said it's disrespectful that people are speculating about his future. Do you think he will be sticking around at Juve? Because there's also been a sensational rumour about him teaming up with Lionel Messi at PSG. Yeah, listen, I, and, and while Cristiano Ronaldo may, may find it disrespectful, it's, it's par for the course when it's Ronaldo, especially when you've seen transfers like Lionel Messi to PSG happen over recent weeks. A transfer that nobody ever thought that Lionel Messi was going to leave Barcelona, especially after that deal fell through last year. But now, all of a sudden, it seems everything is in play, including Ronaldo. And, and everybody knows what's been happening with, with Juventus and how much he, he continues to cost and whether they'd like to, to trim that cost. So that, that speculation is, is par for the course. And while that speculation now links him with, with, with City and, as you tell me, Kay, a little bit dramatic, um, while it makes sense from a footballing perspective, I, I just don't see this happening. Not, not right now. Not given Ronaldo's own links with the other side of Manchester. And while there are a number of players who have played for both, none more than one of my personal favourites and Peter Schmeichel, I, I just don't see it happening this time around with Ronaldo. But <sighs> there's a lot that's happened in recent weeks that nobody anticipated. That's true. So no Ronaldo and Pep Guardiola just yet anyway. Um, Aubameyang to Barcelona is one that we're seeing. Sky Sports are saying that Barcelona are interested in signing Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and that the Liga club are reportedly willing to offer Liverpool's former midfielder, Philippe Coutinho, as part of the exchange for this. Do you see this happening? Um, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense in that um, while Martin Braithwaite had, had a good start to the season against Sociedad, scoring two and, and one assist, um, I, I feel that Barcelona are in greater need of a more accomplished striker, especially with Kuno Guerrero already out for 10 weeks. And we know what his injury record over the last couple of seasons has been like. So it makes sense there. The question is, given that Coutinho right now is probably on about reportedly half of what Obama Yang's wages is, 
and given the issues that Barcelona has had in signing players, most notably Gerard Piquet having to take a, a pay cut for them to sign players before the opening game of the season. You bring in Obama Yang, even if it means losing Coutinho, somebody surely is going to have to take another pay cut or few players are, are going to have to, to contribute towards that. If you can get that done, then great. But from a football perspective, I think it works for Barcelona. I also think it works for Arsenal in that you get Obama Yang off your wages. He's 32 years old, commanding a lot of money. And, and ever since that transfer or since his new deal, he's not really looked himself. So maybe that works for you. And you get a big named, accomplished player who knows the Premier League like Philippe Coutinho sitting in your midfield. A, a, a very talented but young midfield. I, I think he adds to that regard as well. He's also three years younger than Obama Young. I think it works, it works for Arsenal. Let's talk about young, talented midfielders at Arsenal. Martin Erdegaard set for a permanent transfer to Arsenal, potentially, with a fee of around £34 million from Real Madrid. And it would be a five-year deal. Now, it doesn't seem to be going his way back in Madrid, Carlo Ancelotti had told him that he would have to fight for his place, no number for him when the numbers were released. So this makes sense, doesn't it? It makes a whole lot of sense. It makes a whole lot of sense for Real Madrid if Odegaard doesn't figure in Ancelotti's plans. And I think, given what you saw from Odegaard last season in an Arsenal shirt, it works perfectly well for, for both Arsenal and Odegaard as well. He's young. The price isn't uh, an extortionate one. He's very talented. We, we know that, not just from what we saw over the last 12 months. And I think he, he adds to Arsenal in an incredible way. This, this is a win-win-win, if you ask me. Win-win-win. Uh, last one. Kurt Zuma to Tottenham. Now, there are reports that Tottenham are interested in taking him from their Premier League rivals, Chelsea. Is he an upgrade on Tottenham's current centre-back options? Yeah, I, I like Sanchez in, in, mid uh, in, in the centre of, of, of defence. Um, but I, I don't think Dyer is, is a, a centre-back you rely on all season long. You want to bring in a, a, an out-and-out centre-back. And if Dyer has to tuck in there every now and then, great. But I'd use him in, in his preferred position as, as a defensive midfielder. So it, it makes a lot of sense. And, and, and Zuma is a player I also like a lot. But his chances have been and will continue to be limited at Chelsea. So it, it makes sense to me to make that short trip across London to, to sign with a team who promise a lot. Um, and and you, you will feature a, a whole lot more prominently. So that one could make sense. In fact, some of them aren't that two way out. Maybe the Cristiano Ronaldo one, but some of the good ones in there. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.